In this video, we show a systematic way of formulating a linear programming model with an example. Here's a problem statement of the example we will formulate. It would be a good idea to pause the video and read the problem uh, here. You can see here that a bookstore has 40 paperback copies and 65 hardcover copies of a book, of a new novel. Uh, and it needs to get more because of the pre-orders taken from the customers, so it needs to have at least 80 copies of each type, the paperback and hardcover. So that means uh, 80 plus 80 is at least 160 books, but you would like to have as many copies as possible for sale tomorrow. The bookstore could get additional books by rush delivery from its warehouse, and it says the warehouse could deliver up to 10 boxes of books. And there are two types of boxes. There are the paperback boxes that have, well, a paperback, six copies of the paperback. And the hardcover boxes contain not just hardcovers, but also some paperbacks. So there are five hardcovers and two paperbacks each. Now, about the hardcover boxes, it could ship up to seven hardcover boxes. So the question is, what should the warehouse ship in order to best address the store's needs? In formulating a linear programming model, it's a good idea to think of the process as translating words into mathematical formulas. Here are the steps we could take. We briefly describe them first, and then we'll go into details as we work through our example. The first step is to write the objective and the constraints in clear English, and including the units like number of books, units of something, dollar amount, pounds, hours, and so forth. The objective is the quantity that we want to maximize, that is, make it as large as possible, uh, or a quantity to minimize, that is, make it as small as possible. The constraints are limitations and requirements expressed in the problem. Each constraint restricts some quantity to be less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or equal to some value. The second step is to write down the decision variables. Decision variables are directly controllable quantities that influence the objective and the constraints. You want to ask, what quantities do the objective and the constraints depend on? Are they under our control? If not, what other quantities do these depend on? For example, the objective might be to maximize the total profit from two products from, let's say, product A and product B. And let's say you're given the unit profit contributions for these two products. We should ask, what quantities does the total profit depend on? Well, it depends on the profits from the individual products, A and B. That is, profit from A uh, and profit from B. Do we get to choose these profits from A and B? Well, not really. The profit from A depends on how many units of A you produce, and the profit from B depends on how many units of B you produce. So units of A and units of B. Now, do you get to choose how many units of A and how many units of B to produce? Uh, yes, these are the controllable quantities. So they are the decision variables. The third step is to write down the mathematical expressions for the objective and the constraints that we identified here in terms of the decision variables from the second step. In the first step, where you write down the objective and the constraints in, in English, it helps to be able to categorize the different constraint types based on the words used in the problem. There are three kinds of constraints less than equal to for some kind of limited resource, greater than equal to for some kind of minimum performance or requirement, and equal to for some kind of balance relationship. Here we listed some keywords that will help you identify which kind of constraint is appropriate. For less than equal to type constraint, you'll see words like at most, or no more than, not exceed, and so forth like don't allocate more than 40% in the growth stocks, let's say, if you're investing. Or you might say you're limited to 2,000 calories 
intake on this diet, you're restricted to this many calories. The maximum amount of calories you're allowed is 2,000. Or perhaps you have a budget of $100,000 for the particular advertising campaign, so you can use more than that, $100,000. Well, let's say you're assembling bikes and uh, you might be told that you have 100 wheels available so you know that that is uh, less than equal to limited resource uh, type of constraint. Or you might be told that the production capacity this month is 2,000 widgets per month. So that would mean that the amount produced must be less than or equal to 2,000. And here are some keywords for greater than equal to type constraint. Let's say you must drink at least six glasses of water per day, or you are required to drink minimum of six glasses of water per day. Investment portfolio must provide at least 8% expected return. That is, percent return must be greater than or equal to 8. Another way of saying it is the required return is 8%, or the minimum acceptable return is 8%. Some keywords for the equality constraint. We might be told that total amount to invest is equal to $100,000. Or you, we might be told all $100,000 must be invested. Or you could have a constraint indicating that the amount of cash left at the end of the year must be equal to cash at the beginning of the year plus cash inflows minus cash outflows.